Good morning, everyone. For those of you uh, who don't recognize me wearing uh, a tie and winter clothes, my name's Terry Hughes. I'm the director of the ARC Centre of Excellence for Corollary Studies. So welcome to our annual symposium. This is something we do every year to bring together the four nodes of our centre. Those nodes are in Perth, Canberra, Brisbane and Townsville. So this is our annual get together. Um, it's an opportunity for us to showcase our research and tonight we'll also have a public forum with the MC being Dr. Carl. So over the next two days, you'll hear 32 talks. Um, they showcase the diversity of our research ranging from social science to genomics. Um, this year, of course, has been a very busy and testing year for our centre because of the back-to-back -back bleaching, which has affected the Great Barrier Reef in particular. But you'll hear about that, as well as uh, many other topics over the next two days. So it's my pleasure to introduce Leanne Harvey, who's the acting CEO of the Australian Research Council. Uh, ARC, of course, provides our funding. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to introduce Leanne. Well, thank you, everybody. And for those of you not from Canberra, welcome to the Canberra weather. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. It will be beautiful today. I can promise you that. Um, so first off, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge the Ngunnawal people, who are the traditional owners and custodians of the Canberra region. And I'd like to pay my respect to the elders, past, present and future. I'd like to acknowledge all our special guests we've got here today, and in particular, all of the leading coral reef scientists that are here today, which will actually present their important research findings. Congratulations again for coming to Canberra. Um, whenever I have to visit Terry, I find I'm challenged with what clothes I will wear, but I'm not challenged at all today, so I'm sure you've actually found all your winter clothes. I actually met somebody who told me they had every piece of winter clothing that they owned on. So I am delighted um, to be here today to open the, the symposium. The Centre of Excellence is actually really important, the program to the ARC. It is our prestigious program, and we are absolutely committed to making sure that anybody who wins a centre actually makes a difference for Australia and the world with that research. Um, so I thank you for all the work you do in that. It is your review year, so it is really important that you prepare for that review. I think you might have had a trial review, Terry, is that right? Um, so I just want to say it's really important. Terry tells me he's keeping some of you captured, particularly the people from Perth, and making you go to um, Townsville ready for the review next week. So we're really proud to have supported um, this Centre of Excellence since 2005. Over $50 million um, has gone into that, and um, I think it has made a huge difference to what we do here in Australia. So thank you very much. 95 researchers. We have Australian Laureate Fellows which is actually the pinnacle of our fellowships, as you know. Our mid-career researchers, we have future fellowships. We have our discovery, early career researchers. Um, and over 200 research students are, are in this centre. So it is really important to us, and I believe that it's leading that global research effort in understanding our coral reefs. It is a time when the world's coral reefs are facing enormous challenges, as Terry has said. And the centre is providing the science that underpins the coral reef management, both in Australia and internationally. And it's through the links that it's made with the agencies, such as the Great Barrier, Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, sorry, started on that, and the Australian Institute of Marine Science. And it is those connections and working together that makes a difference. So for Australia alone, as you know, the Great Barrier Reef generates nearly $6 billion per annum in value-added contribution to the Australian economy and supports around 70,000 jobs in total. So there is a clear need, not just for the economic benefit to Australia, but also for the ecological and the environment and also our cultural and tourism, which is about to have that research that underpins it to inform it and support policy to protect and manage our reefs not only our reefs, but the ecosystems, and to ensure that it actually supports the well-being that a lot of people gain from that. So outreach, 
Outreach is particularly important, and I wanted to emphasise that today. So the work that you do in actually communicating your research findings to the public and raising awareness is vital. And I'd like you all to think about that when you're doing your work. So it is absolutely imperative that we have that empirical science that underpins it, but actually in talking about what you do and translating that for Australians in the world is vital. So in that respect, Terry in particular has been looking at making sure that the centre has an international identity itself right from the beginning. And I can remember many years ago, Terry may not remember, in 2008, him having a talk about what they wanted to do and to move on with actually talking about what this did so that people could understand what they did, not just scientists, but Australians. I might test him on that to see when he remembered doing that. But it is actually really important. And as Terry said, um, he has had the unenviable task of having to explain the back-to-back -back coral bleaching that we have had and talking about what it's meant and to the world. His role in sounding that alarm over the 2016 bleaching at the Great Barrier Reef received well-deserved recognition when Nature included him in their list of top 10 researchers who mattered in 2016. Um, he was even described as a reef sentinel, which I thought was lovely. He's, he's going to kill me for this later. I've known him for a while. Um, when, we, when I think about the centre and when I read Nature and all the different, different um, publications that I get to read, um, it's really great to see the work and the outreach that Terry does with that. And also him talking about solutions-based, and that's what's important. Not just about what the issue is, but how do we move forward with this? What do we do about managing our reefs into the future? So thankfully, there does appear to be a window of opportunity to save the coral reefs, to ensure that they remain biologically functional and retain their ability to support the livelihoods and the well-being of hundreds of millions of people who both love them and a number of them who depend upon them. And that's the focus of your symposium. So I've had a look over your program. I can see you've got an impressive lineup. It looks really exciting. Um, you just have to go running out to get good coffee and remember not to bring it back in here because they're particularly... I've been stopped at the doors here, so don't try and bring drink in. Um, and I know that you will have fun with Dr Carl tonight. I've been to a number of different seminars with him and he's always good fun. So it is about, and in particular, with Dr Carl, another example of about how to make science fun and enjoyable but educational. So the last thing I wanted to discuss today was about your role in building the capacity of researchers in Australia, and in particular, supporting our early career researchers. A number of you are here today. You may not think of yourself as important. I hope you do. I hope you think and know that we think you are important. It is a pipeline of support that we need and to have the different stages of career supported. So I'd like you, if you are more established in your career, to think about how do you support the more junior researchers that sit under you. It is important. It is important to think about how do we think about those interdisciplinary and cross-disciplinary support. And one of the things I'm sometimes disappointed in is the fact that researchers in one area are not supportive of others in different areas. So sometimes I have very robust conversations with people in the science disciplines about the value of the humanities. And you would notice, if anybody read the um, Telegraph on the weekend, um, I'm often challenged about why does the ARC fund humanities or social science research? Why is it important to understand Australia's place in the world? But I'm never challenged, I can tell you, about biological research, physics research or chemistry research. Even though the people who are challenging that work about humanities and social science may not even understand the proposal summaries that come. So I'd like you to think about, because what you do is very interdisciplinary. It is not only about the scientific work that you do with the coral reefs, but it's about explaining that and how that works for Australians. So it's always fantastic to see our centres actually making that effort to train our next generation of research leaders. Um, I truly believe it's a great place to start a career. And if you get to start your career in one of our centres of excellence, I think it's the best spot you've got for going forward. Um, but what I'd like to say to you is, Always think about those that are becoming behind you. Always think about what can you offer and how can you help the others, because that's what's really important. So to conclude, it gives me great pleasure
to open the symposium. I wish you every success and also in your future research and research careers. I'm very hopeful to see a range, particularly of our early career researchers, come through our system, through our different fellowships and our different schemes, um, as I know you would hope to, to come through as well, and actually look at what difference we can make, both to the reefs but to people understanding how vital research is to Australia in its many different forms that it takes. Thank you.